Republic versus Manavo. GR number 221029, April 24, 2018. Facts. Marilyn Manalo was married to a Japanese national. She later filed for divorce against her husband, and a divorce decree was issued by a Japanese court. In 2012, she sought the cancellation of the entry of marriage in the civil registry of San Juan Metro Manila by virtue of the said divorce decree. She later amended her petition for the judicial recognition of the divorce decree. The RDC denied Marilyn's petition, arguing that the divorce obtained by Marilyn in Japan should not be recognized. The RDC held that based on Article 15 of the New Civil Code, the Philippine law does not afford Filipinos the right to file for a divorce, whether they are in the country or living abroad, if they are married to Filipinos or to foreigners or if they celebrated their marriage in the Philippines or in another country, and that unless Filipinos are naturalized as citizens of another country, Philippine laws shall have control over issues related to their family rights and duties, together with the determination of their condition and legal capacity to enter into contracts and civil relations, including marriages. Upon appeal, the Court of Appeals overturned RTC's ruling. CA held that Article 26 of the Family Code of the Philippines is applicable even if it was Manalo who filed for divorce against her Japanese husband. As such, it will be the height of injustice to consider Marilyn as still married to the Japanese national, who in turn is no longer married to her and can legally have another wife. OSG's motion for recommendation was denied by CA, hence the instant petition. Issue. Does a Filipino citizen have the capacity to remarry under Philippine law after initiating a divorce proceeding abroad and obtaining a favorable judgment against his or her alien spouse who is capacitated to remarry? Held. Yes. Paragraph 2 of Article 26 of the Family Code speaks of a divorce validly obtained abroad by the alien spouse, capacitating him or her to remarry. Based on a clear and plain reading of the provision, it only requires that there be a divorce validly obtained abroad. The letter of the law does not demand that the alien spouse should be the one who initiated the proceeding wherein the divorce decree was granted. It does not distinguish whether the Filipino spouse is the petitioner or the respondent in the foreign divorce proceeding. The purpose of paragraph 2 of Article 26 is to avoid the absurd situation where the Filipino spouse remains married to the alien spouse who, after the foreign divorce decree that is effective in the country where it was rendered, is no longer married to the Filipino spouse. A Filipino who initiated the foreign divorce proceeding is in the same place and in like circumstances as a Filipino who is at the receiving end of an alien-initiated proceeding. Therefore, the subject provision should not make a distinction. In both instances, it is extended as a means to recognize the residual effect of the foreign divorce decree on Filipinos whose marital ties to their alien spouses are severed by the operation of the latter's national law. In fact, there is no real and substantial difference between a Filipino who initiated a foreign divorce proceedings and a Filipino who obtained a divorce decree upon the instance of his or her alien spouse. In the eyes of the Philippine and foreign laws, both are considered as Filipinos who have the same rights and obligations in an alien land. The circumstances surrounding them are alike. Finally, a prohibited view of paragraph 2 of Article 26 would do more harm than good if we disallow a Filipino citizen who initiated and obtained a foreign divorce from the coverage of paragraph 2 Article 26 and still require him or her to first avail of the existing mechanisms under the Family Code. Any subsequent relationship that he or she would enter in the meantime shall be considered as illicit in the eyes of the Philippine law. Worse, 
any child born out of such extramarital affair has to suffer the stigma of being branded as illegitimate. Surely, these are just a few of the adverse consequences, not only to the parent but also to the child, if we are to hold a restrictive interpretation of the subject provision. The irony is that the principle of inviolability of marriage under Section 2, Article 15 of the Constitution is meant to be tilted in favor of marriage and against unions not formalized by marriage, but without denying state protection and assistance to live-in arrangements or to families formed according to indigenous customs.